feel like greater is coming, God. We feel like greater is on its way, oh God. We're blessing you right now, oh God. We're praising you right now. We're glorifying you right now, oh God. We come before your altar, oh God. But with our hands raised, surrendering to you, oh God. Surrendering to your will, oh God. Surrendering to your way, oh God. Oh God, have your way today, oh God. Oh, come to more on our service today, oh God. Rule and soon rule. Anybody want to worship the Lord with me on this morning? Anybody feel the grace? There's a shaking. I feel a, I feel a shaking in the spirit. I feel a shaking. I feel a shaking in the spirit today. God's going to shake some things up for somebody. He's going to shake us up today. Yes, Lord. As the song is saying, as you hear the words of the song. I feel it. I feel a pressing in my spirit today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's preparing us for greater. Anybody out there online, are you preparing for greater? Is anybody out there online, do you want greater? Are you looking for greater in your life today? God wants to do greater for you. You that's in the building, you that's in the hallway, God is preparing us for greater on the day. Oh my goodness, I feel you, Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power. Yes, greater, greater, greater. Anybody believe that today? Anybody believe that today? That it's coming, it's coming. Yes, well, my healer. Here comes my deliverance. My redeemer, my restorer. My miracle is coming today. I feel a shaking. Are you glory? Hey, are you Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel the spirit. I feel it coming. Have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Yes, yes, yes. Can we just worship God for a few minutes? Can we just begin to worship God? That's why we're here today to worship Him. Come on, let your praise go up. Let all my let your praise go up. Let your praise go up right now. Begin to worship your God. You can believe it. You can believe it. That your prayer is coming. As a matter of fact, it's already here. Come on, clap your hands. If you can believe that it's already here, begin to tell God thank you. And begin to tell the Lord thank you because it's already here. Greater is not just coming, but greater is here right now. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Greater is coming. I feel a shaking in my spirit. I feel a shaking. God's going to shake us up today, believers. Listen, God says, I'm going to shake some things up today. If you can just begin to praise me. If you can grab hold of faith today. If you can grab hold of God today. He says, I'm going to shake some things up for you. Yes. If you're in the audience and you need God to shake some things up. Why don't you type in there and say, shake it up, Lord. Shake it up, Lord. Oh, my. Shake it up, God. You know you need a shaking. Yes, Lord. God says, I'm going to shake it today. I'm going to send a cloud. I'm going to send a ship cloud today. Because I want better for you. Listen, beloved, God wants greater for you. I don't care what your situation says. I feel like the Spirit is moving me right now in this direction to tell you. I don't care what your situation is right now. I don't care how hard it is. I know it's tough. I, I, I know you're going through right now. But listen, God says, I got greater for you. That if you can believe all things are possible to them that believe. Can you believe my sister? Can you believe my brother? Yes. You are online right now. Can you just believe? God says, all I need you to do is just believe. And I'm going to do it for you today. Listen, if you believe that, you need to get to our praise right now. I believe he's going to do it. And we thank him right now. We praise him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are tuning in live already in progress. The GWC Greater Works Church Ministries Word Works broadcast our pop-up service, and we are.
here live in Riverdale, Illinois at the Whistler's Crossing Clubhouse, 13750 South Low in Riverdale, Illinois. Listen, God has us here for a purpose. Amen. God has us here for a reason, and that reason is to be a blessing to you. God has us here to shine the light in this city, to let Riverdale know, to let Dalton know, to let Calumet City, Lansing, Posey, Mark, and Harvey, let them know that there is a bomb in Gilead. Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, there's a bomb, and he's coming to heal the soul. Listen, y'all, y'all got to excuse Pastor Steve today. I'm just excited. The God has been speaking to me since four this morning. See, see, that's why we're going to talk about that a little later, about a shift. See, a lot of people can't feel God like they want to because they need to make that shift. They haven't shifted into that realm yet. See, praise and worship will shift you. And listen, I don't wait till I get the church feel the shift. Yeah. I, I bring that shift with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. We're just so happy to have you. We ask that you please like and share this broadcast. Why don't you call up somebody? Send them texts. Oh my goodness, right now. Say, listen, the Word Works broadcast is live, and you need to tune in because God has a word for you today. Listen, we can share everything. We can post everything. Why don't you share this with somebody today? Please like and share because we believe the Lord has a word for you on today, amen. And listen, if you can, why don't you, if your name is in the bro, in the uh, comments, we've got someone that can will let us know uh, who's on the broadcast, because I really want you to know that we see you. Many people, they tell me afterward, they, they text, say, Pastor Steve, did you see me on the broadcast? I will support you. I said, well, I, I appreciate that, but if you don't put your name in there, then I won't know who's supporting and who isn't, amen. So maybe if you want to just put your name, if you like the comment, then I'll know that you are there. But GWC, we appreciate everybody that tuned in, amen. And you can catch this not only on Facebook Live, but you can also catch it tonight on our YouTube channel. So you can watch it when we give you on-demand programming on your schedule, amen. And if you're in the building today at Whispers Crossing, you're welcome to come on in. This service is for you, amen. The service is for you. So thank you. And we're going to go ahead and do our spoken with our scripture. And then we're going to go further into our service. Listen. Yes. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to hold it together right now. But my soul is happy this morning. My soul is excited. I, I, was, in, I was excited in Sunday school this morning. Amen. I, we went a little longer in Sunday school because we were talking about the beyond. This is your service. This is your service. This is your service. We're your people. Do what you want to do, Holy Ghost. Move today. Move and super move. Yes, Lord. 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 We have a program, but God owns the program. Amen. The Holy Ghost runs the agenda. Amen. Our scripture reading says, starting at the 13th verse. First Thessalonians uh, 5 and 13 says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sound not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, hey, glory, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Again, we read for your reading, First Thessalonians, the fifth, uh, the fourth chapter, the thirteenth through the eighteenth verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of His word for the edification of our souls. Amen. Can we give the word of the Lord a hand on today? Amen. At this time, we're going to go right into our praise and worship. While I feel the Spirit moving, we just going to let the Spirit. We're going to flow right in with the Spirit right now. Turn this over to our praise team. Let's say amen for our praise team at this time. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God, just let the spirit flow. Hallelujah. 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 I just, I just want to set a certain atmosphere right now.
God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we adore you. Hallelujah. This right here is a season of worship. Hallelujah. Season of praise. Hallelujah. Glorify you in our Father's name. Not every chance we can get. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's give a quick testimony real quick. All right. So I was out at 3 o'clock in the morning last night. I met my real father last night. Oh, wow. I didn't know how to present myself in front of my father. I've never seen him again in my life. But I knew that God was preparing me for greater. Yeah, yes. God prepared me to meet my father. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as a, as a son, I think I'm angry. I'm angry. I don't have a father in my life. Well, you, you know, everybody, most people who don't have a father in their life, they don't head in the right direction. You know, but my mother and my grandmother kept me surrounded by praying people. They kept me in the church and stuff like that. Yes. So my life didn't turn on how, how, how could it be. That's right, that's right. You know what I mean? God gave me favor. And God, God was my father. Hallelujah. Thank you. God, God pushed me. When I walked the stage and, and, I, and I threw my hat in the sky, I felt God's hand on my back. Because I, I just felt I just felt that it's been, you did it. You did it. See, because when you really put your effort in something, God will let you do it. No matter what the enemy tells you, no matter what nobody tells you, you can prevail through God. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you all. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do anything. You believe. Hallelujah. That's the power of God in you is your belief. That's With it. your belief, God will work in your situation and things will happen. You never thought that could happen. Hallelujah. Things will manifest into your life. Manifest into your situation. Manifest into existence. By your belief and your faith in God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, so grow your faith, hallelujah. All right. The pastor and the man of God, bless that seed in you, grow your faith. Allow for the, allow for the vines of Jesus to grow and take control of your situation so you can be better, so you can be who you truly are, so you can serve a purpose, hallelujah. Everybody has a purpose. That's right. Some people make their own purpose. But I know I had a purpose before I was, I was even born. I knew I had a purpose. Hallelujah. And God told me that you were going to be a singer. God told me that you were going to have your own studio. God told me that you were going to be used for my grace and my will for, for, for what I need done. Hallelujah. And I'm honored to be a best. I'm honored to be used by God. Hallelujah. No, I don't know. People say, oh, you can, you can be an R.B. singer. You can be this. You can be that. I don't got to win an award in my life. As long as I know that I'm going to make it into heaven. That's it. As long as I know that I can sit next to my big brother Jesus, that I can praise and worship for more than praise and worship and pray and worship the praise, that's sufficient enough for me to know that I did it. I achieved something in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. So that's all I got for you today. Hallelujah.
pray for me because you tune in with us. You tune in with us at 9 o'clock Sunday school, amen, on the Sunday school 2.0, amen. We are leveling up our Bible game in the Word, amen. amen. Great, great, great discussion again. Listen, y'all stop sleeping on Sunday school. <laughs> y'all hear me out there? Look, one thing about online, I'm going to tell y'all, hold on, Caleb, okay, they need to get this one. See, let me explain to y'all the benefit of online. Because maybe y'all ain't got that. See, online don't necessarily mean you got to sit there and stare at the TV. Right. Amen. You are online, you can be washing up, you can be cleaning, you can be prepared. Look, getting ready for your service. Look, while you got it on, how many of y'all listen to the news while y'all getting ready in the morning? I know every morning we turn our TV on the Fox News so we can listen to the weather while we get ready. And sometimes we're not just sitting there, but we're getting dressed. We're right. making up the bed. We're finding our clothes. We're preparing, but all the while we're listening. We want to find out what the weather going to be today, what the traffic going to look like today. See, that's how the online word is. Yes. You can be doing all that and find out what does Jesus want me to do today. What's my purpose today? What God has in store for me today? Yes. And you can do all of that while listening. And listen to class. Amen. Amen. So y'all first, every 9 o'clock Sunday morning, Thursday night, E-night service, get you some empowerment yes. on Thursday night. Amen. Amen. And we talked about peace last Thursday. Oh, in the pursuit of peace. If you need peace, you need to go to our YouTube channel and listen to that message. God gave that to us because we need to pursue peace. In this day, amen. 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 And then just a couple of quick announcements uh, before we go into, we'll have Brother Kayla come back for one more song, and then we'll go up into the Word, and then we'll have our communion, and we'll be done. Amen, amen, amen. But a couple of announcements. Uh, we are coming up uh, on Father's Day. Amen, Father's Day. Amen. 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 Uh, God bless Brother Kayla and his. I can definitely share a story. I never saw mine before. You know, I still look today that maybe perhaps one day I'll, hear, I'll roll up on them too. But if not, don't worry about it. You know, I, my Heavenly Father has been there with me. But we're talking, we're going to have Father's Day, and that's the third Sunday of this month. And we are theming it. We're going to have some young men that's going to come, young fathers, amen, amen. that are going to come and talk, amen. So I'm going to give a tribute. And we're going to be, in that particular theme that day is Father's Day, we're going to be talking about boys to men. All right. Oh, no. Okay. We're going to talk about boys to men on that okay. day. Amen. So you want to be a part of that? We already got our speakers. They already, the flyers will be going out. And we're going to deal with the stuff that turned these, as the song said, these are the things that turn boys to men. Amen. Right. Amen. So you want to be a part of that. And we also will be having our next nurse. Everybody, you haven't got a chance to be a part of our e, e Health Night. Amen. We launched that last month where we dealt with dementia and the, those caring for dementia. So every month, one Thursday a month, we're going to dedicate that Thursday to bringing in a nursing professional that's going to help us talk about these taboo topics, Amen. particularly in our black community that we don't want to talk about. Amen. 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 And so this month, we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be helping be caregivers of all kind, amen, just caregivers of all, how do you know when you care for somebody, that's tough, mm -hmm. you know, and caregivers, they do a lot of work, and there's a lot of different situations they're in, but we want to encourage the caregivers, and then we're going to deal with mental health next, amen, mm -hmm. that's a big one right there, we're going to deal with, then we're going to deal with, you know, therapy, and coaching, and counseling, that's a taboo in the black community, mm -hmm. and I can tell you as a, uh, as a, as a professional, Counselor, marriage and family counselor, I can tell you, our black men, I'm saying that in the camera, so y'all black men can hear me. Black men don't like counseling. They don't like marriage counseling. They don't like coaching. They think there's something wrong with them if they got to go get some help. But how many know we can get, we can get the help that we need. So we're going to be dealing with, you know, getting over why counseling is a good thing. Amen. amen. You can be saved and still get counseling. Amen. 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 And with that being said, so those are our announcements. Please go be yourself the court. We got some people out there. We want to say happy birthday. Uh, amen. To Sister Tiffany Griffin, our announcer. Amen. amen. Happy birthday to her. <laughs> amen. Also to uh, one of our newer uh, uh, Whistlers Crossing attendees, Sister Denisha Bell. She had her birthday. Amen. They're out of town right now. And we're going to celebrate them on next week. Amen. amen. Uh, and to all of the graduates out there, 
GWC says, can, can we give all of the graduates? It doesn't matter what level you graduated in, all of the graduates, we are so happy for you. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring Brother Caleb back for another song, and then we're going to go forth in the Word.
don't know what the end thing is in your life, but do you love God more than that? Do you love more God more than them? Yes. Do you love God more than her? Yes. More than him? Come on now. Come on. That's what God is asking this morning. See, this funny thing about when you love somebody, you almost don't really have to tell them to say it. They just, they just want to tell you. And they want to show you. And God loves us so much that he just wants to show us yes. every day. Yes, he does. And my brother, so the fact that you are alive right now, the fact that you are breathing right now, is just an example of how much he loves you. Yeah. Say, well, Pastor, does that mean somebody who didn't wake up this morning, he didn't love them? I'm not saying that either. But what I'm saying is he loved me enough to give me another day. And see, listen, if he gave you another day, what you going to do? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, he, he gave you one more day. What you going to do? Thank him, thank him, hallelujah. It's worthy. So I love the Lord more than anything. Amen. Give the Lord a hand on us today. Yeah. Amen. While we're standing, we're going to go right into the word of God. Listen, I believe we'll have to be here long for the Lord to come in. Amen. And listen, listen, y'all y'all, y'all get this one today. You know, it's some, some that may not be here, but listen, God says, I want you to give them this one. Because, you know, and, and I'm going to tell y'all something. The message is usually to the preacher, the 41st through the 45th verse. So we're going up Kings, which is in the Old Testament, amen. If you look at the Kings in the back of the Bible, you're not going to find any of those Kings there, amen. You want to go to the middle of your Bible. You got your devices, just plug it in, and uh, uh, we going to go ahead and read. Uh, first of all, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your people. We thank you for the message, oh God. Lord, let your word go forth with power and conviction, Lord, that at the end of this broadcast, after hearing the word, somebody will come crying, what must I do to be saved? And if they're saved already, God, they'll come saying, how can I get the more of you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First Kings 18, 41 and 45 says, and Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up unto the mount of, top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Everybody say, there is nothing. There is nothing. And said, and he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time mm -hmm. that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like the size of a man's hand. And he said, go and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Amen. And the hand of the Lord was with Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Amen. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Listen, I'm going to take a text today. Y'all get this one today. Look at somebody and say, your shift, your shift, shift. Is, coming. is coming. Oh, look, let's do a little uh, subtext and say the shift cloud. The shift cloud. Is coming. Is coming. Go, look, go look for it. Go look for it. Go look for the ship cloud. All right. Because it's getting ready to come. Oh, my goodness. What are we talking about a ship? Listen, when we talk about a ship, I'm going to give y'all the Webster's definition of it first. Amen? Listen, there, it says a ship can be either a verb or a noun. 
And they taught me in school that a verb meant something that was an action word. Amen. And they said that a noun was a person, a place, or a thing. Amen. And so it, as a verb shift means to move or cause something or someone to move in a different place or position. It can also mean to put something aside and replace it with another or to transfer something from one place, position, or person to person. Uh -huh. Now, as a noun, if I say as a noun, now. it refers to a change, mm -hmm. an adjustment, implying some kind of movement or change in direction. Additionally, it can refer to the changing gears in a motor vehicle. Okay. Oh my goodness, listen, we're talking about what is a shift. Mm -hmm. Shift, see, we're gonna give, give you a little background about this first. Look. See, see, when you're talking about a shift, you begin to look at where you are in your life right now. You know, there's a lot of people that are unhappy in their station in life. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Bible tells us in James is say, having therefore food and raiment to be ye content. Understanding this, being content does not mean you sell. Mm -hmm. Let me clear that up right now because a lot of people say that being content does not mean you sell. Mm -hmm. Content simply means that I'm going to be content whether so of a state I'm in. I learn wherewith to be content. Understanding that if I can be content on this level, mm -hmm. there's got to be another level. See, now, that's why we always talk about leveling up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, -huh, uh See, the game would say it's time to level up. You can't level up in the game if you're still on level one. Right, right. Everybody playing the game is trying to get to level two, level three. So eventually, they want to beat the game. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Years ago, I used to uh, play a game called Mortal Kombat. Uh -huh. And I would play Mortal Kombat, and I would try and try to get from the first guy all the way up to the uh, game, which was, the guy was called Shi Shane. And if you could get to Shi Shane and beat him, now you became the new gamer. And it took a whole lot to do that. It took me a long time. I had to play a long time. I had to get through a whole lot of tough characters. Sub-Zero. Uh, I had to get through Scorpion. I had to get through Balrog. I had to get through Gorg with the six arms. But after a while, I kept playing. And I kept playing until every time I, I got to another level. And when I, and, I, and I got excited at that level, I said, oh, I got to get to the next level. See, that's what I'm talking about. You can be, I was excited where I was, but in my mind, I knew I had somewhere else to go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about when it says you can be content, but you don't sell. Mm -hmm. But see, understand this. You don't get to the next level until you understand the shift. Everybody say the shift. The shift. And I'm not talking about the shift on your job. I'm talking about the shift in movement. See, I'm going to tell you, I, 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 the Lord gives me what to say. He gives me what to teach. And, and, and between trying to, uh, he helped me give me something for Thursday, and then the lesson on Sunday one, and then Sunday one, uh, Sunday school, and Sunday, I said, God, what do you have for your people? And I was trying to sleep. I was tired last night, too. I was trying to sleep. And about, I didn't even know what time it was, but he, 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 I rolled over, and he was saying, get up. Yeah, the Lord ever told y'all to get up? Y'all see, y'all know y'all probably did like I did. You try to say maybe he don't mean right now. <laughs> you know, maybe he mean get up eventually. <laughs> but I, I, I kept trying to stay asleep, but he said, get up. And he and I went to my office and I sat down and he said, This, he said, people need a shift. He said, I, I want you to talk about the fact that there's a drought in the land. Anybody got a drought in their life? See, what is a drought? A drought is when there's no rain, when it's dry. It's barren. We need water to exist, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and the newscast is telling us that there's no rain in sight. For the next so-and-so days, it's going to be in the 90s, but there's no rain. 
We need rain to exist. Amen. Uh, so in our lesson today, we find King Ahab, and there's a time in uh, Israel's uh, turn where it had not rained. The Lord told Elijah, go and tell Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Listen to what God tells the prophet to do. He says, you go up and you put your finger in Ahab's face. And you say, from there, at the sound of my voice and my command, there shall not be any rain. For three and a half years. Can you imagine the prophet coming to you telling you that for your finances, that there's not going to be no rain for three and a half years? That's not good news, is it? <laughs> That's some hard work. That's some hard work. So you go to try to figure out how much can you save, how much can you cut back, where you're going to have to draw. Say, for three and a half years, I have to endure this. But he told her, he said, this is what's going to happen. You will see no rain. So, so it was, let's fast forward a little bit. Ahab was discouraged. He was the king of Israel, and it was the king's responsibility to make sure that the kingdom had what they needed. See, water was provided needed for the animals. It was needed for the people. It was needed for the crops. And you know what happens as a leader. And when things start going wrong or they don't look like they're going right, everybody comes to the leader. Well, what you going to do now? All right, now, now, I know you see this. What you going to be at Ahab? We ain't got no water. We are, our crops are dying, drying up. The, uh, the animals are dying. What you going to do? You're supposed to be the king. Now, funny thing about this, I'm going to give you a little background on this one. Ordinarily, old King Ahab, you know, the old folk, he had a word for this, said that he was henpecked. <laughs> Ordinarily, King Ahab always got his instructions from his wife Jezebel. You know, anytime they wanted to do something, Nahab had a, a vineyard, and he wanted Nahab's vineyard. Rather than go be a man and talk to Nahab and say, Nahab, what can we do to get your vineyard? How much are you willing to sell it for? He went and cried and told his wife, he said, Naaman won't give me his garden. <laughs> and what did his wife do? She said, hold on, babe, I got you. I'll take care of Naaman, Nahab. And, and long, without having to give you the whole story, she got the vineyard for her husband. All right. Uh-huh. And every, t every time the prophet would come to the king, you know, Ahab would start crying. He would say, every time the prophet comes, he don't have nothing but bad news. See, look, you know why I like that type of prophet? Because that's more of a true prophet right there. I'm going to say this and look. Uh, I'm sure about 20 guys who tell you nothing but what you want to hear. See, if every time the prophet is going to come and tell you that you're going to get something, you might want to question that prophet. Because the true prophet of God is going to come and tell you how to do better. The true prophet of God is going to come and tell you your purpose. Why are you not walking in your purpose? But if they all they want to tell you is you're gonna get a husband, you're gonna get a wife, you're gonna you gonna get your you're gonna get money, you're gonna get a big bank account, and all of that stuff is all of that is good. But if that's all they're telling you all the time, and they never telling you what you how you need to live to please God to get that, mm -hmm. be careful them prophets right there. Amen. Amen. See, Ahab didn't like when the prophet came because the prophet he said always oh, got bad news. And it really wasn't bad news because it was warning. See, God, oh my goodness, y'all get this. God shows his love for us by not just executing judgment, but giving us warning first. Oh, that's mercy right there. Because God in his infinite wisdom, he can just take you out. He don't have to give you no warning. God don't have to do like your job and give you a progressive disciplinary process. You know, on the job, they tell you in the handbook, they say it's called at will. Y'all know what at will mean? 
that means really that job can fire you at will. But instead of doing that, they try to get you that verbal. You know, you get that written. Get that final. That final, final. And then after that, they say, now we're going to need our badge and key back. But God says, rather than use my uh, at-will ability, I'm going to send warning. Now, now, how we react to the warning will determine our own outcome, isn't it? Uh, you know, a lot of people, I, I've been managing for almost 30 years, and I tell people, I said, I have never fired one person. I said, but they fired themselves. See, in other words, you fire yourself because of how you behave, amen? Amen, I, I just basically honor your choice. <laughs> That's all I do, I just honor your choice. All right? So now, in our lesson today, God is, Elijah is telling Ahab the same prophet that told him three and a half years ago that it wasn't going to rain. Now we fast forward three and a half years ahead. Isn't that something? Y'all better understand. See, listen, God, when he says something is going to be a certain way, it's going to be that way. And sometimes we can pray, 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 and all that, and God says, no, I'm not going to release it until I'm ready for it to be released. Your blessing and your miracle is not going to be released until he says it's going to be released. So we get frustrated and talking about he don't love us, he don't care about us. When God sets an appointed time for something to happen, he sticks to his time schedule. He told them, he told them, he said, down there, I'm going to send y'all into captivity to Babylon for 70 years. He said, for every year that y'all disobeyed me, I'm going to give you that many years in captivity. But then he got, listen, because he's such a good God, he came and encouraged them in Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. I mind you, they were in their 70 years of captivity, but he was encouraging them, don't get caught up in the 70 years because it's going to take 70 years. But just know at the end, I've got an expected end for when it's going to stop. So when Elijah told Ahab, God said, three and a half years, I'm not, it's not going to let it rain. It was not going to rain for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. But now in our lesson today, because we're talking about the shift cloud. Everybody say the shift cloud. The shift cloud. Uh, it said, now listen, it said in verse, and now Elijah said unto Ahab, get up. Mm -hmm. Woo! You know what that means? He said, get up. Guess what, Ahab? It's time. Mm -hmm. See, Ahab wasn't eating. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't taking care of himself because he was fussing and worrying about the fact there wasn't no rain. See, that's why I'm, God wants you to understand why you in that waiting period. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you wait. Right. Right. Uh, you See, God is watching how we wait. Because he wants to see now, is they, are they going to curse me or are they going to continue to trust me? So Ahab, Elijah came again. Now listen, now this is the king now. This is like the president. This is like going to the president and saying, President, get up. Stop all that. Get you some food. Go in the kitchen. Tell the first lady to get you something to eat. And now you eat and you drink and you get up. And Elijah said, why are you in there eating? He said, for there is a sound. Everybody say a sound. A sound. Give me a little sound. Give me a little sound. I want to hear a little sound. A little. See, he said, there is a sound. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting happy. Listen, we got to start listening for the sound. See, the deliverance comes with a sound. Ooh, deliverance, it comes with a sound. Say, well, Pastor, what kind of sound should I be listening for? I don't know what the sound would it sound like, but I know in your spirit. That's why when we open up today with that song, that all of a sudden there's a shaking in my spirit. Something is going on. I'm, 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 I'm starting to hear something. And listen, sometimes we look outside, don't we? And we kind of hear a little rumbling. They say, uh-oh. I 
think that's thunder. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the wind started picking up and you can kind of hear that. <sighs> it's a sound coming. Mm -hmm. And then just out of nowhere you start to hear little specks on the window. <laughs> and raindrops start coming down. Mm -hmm. They say, wait a minute, y'all, that sounds like rain. Oh my goodness, listen, Elijah is encouraging, and listen, we encourage you all today, get up. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody say get up. Get up. Get up and listen for the sound. Yeah. There's a sound of abundance. <laughs> Not just rain, but abundance. Yeah. Can anybody get excited about abundance? All right. Yes. There's a sound of abundant rain. And he said, and, I, and Ahab went up to eat and drink. And what did Elijah do? In other words, he said, you go do that. Now I'm going to go do my part. See, remember, Elijah was the one that pronounced the prophecy. Right. He had to be the one to pronounce it was over. Right. Woo Listen, that's why y'all need to respect the men and women of God. Amen. Come on now. You need to respect. Because see, listen, God gives us the authority. To pronounce. And, 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 and when, when he's done with it, he's going to come back to us and say, now it'll end when you say it's over. Right. So now Elijah came back and he said, why are you are getting up and eating and shirking yourself? Because what he was telling Elijah, uh, uh, Ahab was, the journey that you're about to do, the victory that you're about to achieve, you're going to need to have strength. Mm -hmm. Listen, people of God, we, if you, we get in the ship, we got to prepare for the ship. Yes, yes. Listen, some of us haven't got the ship because we haven't prepared for the ship. Mm -hmm. We're not ready for the ship. Amen. Elijah knew Ahab needed strength because they was getting ready to go into battle. And he couldn't go into battle weak. He, he can't be ready for the ship. Woo, but if we can get in our mind that the ship is coming, because I hear the sound. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then he said, "Go." He said, "Why are you doing that?" Elijah says, "I'm going to pray." The man of God says, "You go over there and eat. I'm going to go and pray." All right. He said, "I'm getting ready to go and pray." And the Bible says, "And he threw Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself upon the earth and put his face between his knees." Come on, I'm always, I'm almost done. I'm trying, I'm trying not to rush it because I won't try to get this. But listen, the prophet huh? went up to pray, and, and 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 I like a prophet that told me that they got to pray first. Yes, yes. Because see, you ain't just saying stuff off the top of your head because you think that's what we want to hear. Right. But see, I'm going to pray that this thing be over. Uh, and then it said that, and then it came, and then he said, now go to his servant. Elijah called his servant. He said, come here, man. I got a job for you to do. He said, I want you to go out into the field. Y'all ready for this? I want y'all to, to go out there, and I want you to look up in the sky and tell me what you see. Young man said, tell you what I see, all right? He goes out to the window, and he looks up. comes back. He says, I see nothing. How many times God has told y'all he's going to bless y'all? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make the way for you. Nope. That check is coming. That job is coming. And you go out to the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And you open it up. And, we, and, and rather than come back to God and thank him for what he said he's going to do, uh -huh. we come back to tell God what he already knew. God, I see nothing. Oh, God said, okay, that's all right. So he told me, he said, go back again the second time. Man, the young man goes back. I, I, I like the obedience of this young man. <laughs> he goes back again. And he looks again. Throw Here's this emoji. Comes back again and says, Elijah, uh -huh. I see nothing. nothing. Come on. How many times do we do that? Yes. We pray the second time because they said, well, I 
don't want it to seem like I don't have faith. So I, but I'm going to pray again because they told me to keep praying. And I, Lord, I prayed again, and yet I still see nothing. The pain is still there. The trouble is still there. The check still hasn't arrived. I see nothing. See, y'all got to see, this is where that shift come in at. See, now I'm not going to go through all seven times, but now just imagine. Now, this is the second time. So now he tells the young man to do it seven times. How many of y'all are willing to be obedient seven times? How many of y'all are willing to do what the man of God tells you to do seven times? Uh-huh. Uh, we can all keep it real, can't we? <laughs> so now, 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 if it ain't happening on the first or second, I'll even give them three, but three times, you know, strike out at three times. You know, some, some of y'all say y'all give them four, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? But now you've already decided how much time you're going to give it. Listen, that's how we do God. We've already decided in our mind how much time we're going to give God. Uh -oh. God, if you don't do it by this time, I got to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure it out because, God, you aren't listening. Uh -oh. and, every, and, and oh, my goodness, I, I hate to even say this part, but some of us have to nerve to almost call God a liar. Oh. Because you, when we, you know when we go to rehearsing what he said he was going to do, and he didn't do it? How, how do you feel when somebody come to you, and you told them you're going to do something, and you ain't did it, and they come to you talking about, I mean, you, you, you said you was going to do it. You're like, wait a minute, so you're trying to call me a liar? Oh, no. Ain't that what we think? So wait a minute, I mean, so what you're trying to say, that I don't keep my word or something? But isn't it strange that God will send us back seven times? Mm -hmm. And we come back and we say, God, I see nothing. But now listen, the shift cloud is coming. The shift cloud. Give me a little shift cloud sound. Mm -hmm. See, the shift cloud is coming. See, Ahab, look, the whole time. Did y'all miss this? So I'm going to bring it to you. The whole time the young man was going back and forth to look, mm -hmm. Ahab was still in the praying position. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? The whole time the prophet, uh, he was praying, and the young man came back and answered him, Elijah went and prayed again. Mm -hmm. the young man went out and came back again. I know he cried, but Elijah, um, I don't see nothing again. Elijah said, Oh, that's Father Jesus. We believe you said you were going to I trust you. You told me you would do it. I trust your word. You're not a man that you should lie, but the son of man that you should repent. Oh my goodness, God. I begin to lie to you and say, Lord, we thank you for the rain. God, I thank you because the rain is coming. I believe you. I thank you because it's getting ready to happen. I feel it in my spirit. I, I can smell it. Old folks say they can smell the rain coming. I believe you. I can try to smell the rain. God, what they tell you, say, old folks, they say, all of a sudden they get it in the knee. They say that I can feel this rain because my knee's starting to hurt. Woo, that's an over right there, but that's a sign. Yeah. And they started getting happy because they said, wait a minute, oh, Grandma said that she's feeling it in her knees. I believe only Elijah started feeling it in his knees. He started smelling it. He said, uh oh, it's fifth time, sixth time. Elijah started getting happy. He said, go out there the seventh time. And the Bible says, yes. When the young man went out the seventh time, he went to the window. Look, I don't even know if he got excited. He probably did it like this. I know ain't nothing up there, but I'm going to look anyway. That's how we do it. I know ain't nothing happening, God, but I'm going to look anyway. Pastor, that's what you said. Okay, I'm going to look. But the young man went up and he looked. And I can imagine he probably... Wait, 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 wait a minute. What, what is that? And he looked. He said, wait a minute. The sky is blue. No clouds. But what is that I see in the distance? And he came back. He said, Elijah. He said, I saw a cloud about the size of a man's hand. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute, y'all. The sixth time he said, I saw nothing. But on the seventh time, he said, I see 
a cloud. Somebody say it's time for the ship cloud. The ship cloud showed up, y'all. The ship cloud showed up, and it showed up for rain. Oh, my goodness. And when that cloud got closer, it got bigger. That cloud got closer, and it got bigger. And all of a sudden, y'all heard it in the Bible. It said all of a sudden, the sky started turning black. Oh, my God. Y'all hear it? Anybody happy about this? Y'all see what we're talking about here? See, right now in your life, it's dark. It's cloudy. And you think it's just another rainstorm that's coming to ruin your day. But God said, I'm going to send the shift cloud so it can bring you the rain of deliverance. What it simply means was, in that cloud, what you've been going through is over. In that cloud, what you've been dealing with is over. That rain that you Matter that the rain was coming, 
if you didn't believe it. You know, the weatherman would tell you it's going to rain. You say, oh, it ain't going to hit my area. He must be over there on the north side. But just when you step out there to make your plans and have your picnic, here come the rain. And it destroys you because you didn't prepare for it. But if I was you and I knew the rain was coming, I would go start giving me some buckets. I would start giving me some pails. Because I'm going to start, I want, to, I want all of my buckets to be filled up. Oh my goodness. Listen, if I believe God is getting ready to give me a financial miracle, oh my goodness, I got my wallet out. I got my card out. God, fill it up. Fill my bank account up. I'm checking, I'm going on my phone, checking my balance. Oh my goodness, making sure I'm not in no negative status. Oh my goodness, I want all of that money. Amen. Woo, see, that's called preparing for. Listen, if God's going to ship you from the bus to a car, don't go out and buy a new bus pass. If God is going to ship you from an apartment to a house, don't go out there looking for more rentals. People don't get a new house because they didn't prepare for it. They didn't work on their credit. They didn't save no money. They didn't do nothing. They heard the prophets tell them, God's going to give you a new house. And they shot But they didn't do nothing for them. But see, now, if the prophet tells you and you prepare for it, your ship is coming. Come on, can we get excited about this ship? God, we thank you right now, Lord, for the ship in our spirit. Listen, we are at the halfway point of the year. We are in June, y'all. What it took us from January, y'all hear this? What it took from January to get to June, it's going to take a shift to get from June to December. Y'all didn't catch that, did y'all? The faith that got you where you at right now, you're going to need another faith get you where you're trying to go. And I'm prepared for the ship. GWC Ministries, we prepare. I, I, I'm going to close with that. GWC Ministries, listen, we get ready for a ship. Are y'all listening? Y'all understand this. We get ready for a ship. See, I, I don't look at what it looks like right now. I'm content where I am when I'm not seven. Because I know that if I trust my God, Chairs. We bought more than enough chairs. 